Welcome to the EHC TV Sports Interview. I'm Logan Nestor here with first year men's basketball head coach David Wilson. How are you today, Coach Wilson? Doing great. How are you? Doing well. Yeah. Coach Wilson, you started the season on a really high note, went down to uh, the Barry Classic in Barry, Georgia. Uh, tell me a little bit about that tournament and what went right for the team with two wins against teams that Emory and Henry lost to last year. Yeah, I thought we showed a lot of good things in the opening tournament. Um, Probably the thing that I really liked the most was how our team responded to some adverse situations. Um, we, in our first game, we didn't have a great first half. We were down pretty significantly at halftime. And uh, I just loved the way that our team battled back in the second half. We didn't allow that um, tough start to negatively impact how we played in the next half. And the same thing happened in the next game. Um, Covenant went on a run in the second half and they got ahead of us. Um, and the way our guys bounced back from that run and um, you know the way they played after that really enabled us to uh, win the game and and um, you know it, it was a good sign to me about how we're going to continue to handle tough stretches. And then since then I believe it's been four losses in a row some really close games in there and some really good competition you played number 13 Virginia Wesleyan tell me about what not necessarily went wrong during that stretch, but what needs to happen to get those close losses and turn them into wins? Yeah, you know, this is a process for our team. And, and I will say that our guys are doing a lot of really good things. Even in those losses, I'm seeing a lot of things that I think are really positive. Uh, they're playing really hard. Um, as I mentioned about um, the first tournament, I think they're continuing to, to give a great effort in terms of responding to adversity. And um, I think that's just gonna be so important for us. We're staying together, and uh, I think, you know, in terms of a technical, on the technical side of things, I think we just have to get a little bit more attentive to detail. Some of it is me continuing to teach, and uh, this is a completely new system for them. It's a new style of play, and um, it's just going to take time for us to get comfortable being successful with this style of play. So I have to do a good job of continuing to teach the guys and giving them an understanding of what they have to do to, to be successful with this style. but. They have to continue to stay positive and stay together and um, stay focused on learning the things that we need to learn to be more successful. And especially on the defensive end, I think that we're allowing a little too much slippage, um, particularly in two games we lost a couple weeks ago to Ferrum and uh, to uh, Barry College. Uh, those were games that were right there for us. And I feel like as we grow as a team, we'll be able to win those games because we'll be more attentive to detail down the stretch. All right, and you talked about adversity a little bit. You've had some injury adversity early on. Miles Turner is in a walking boot on the sideline right now. Uh, Brandon, a uh, freshman big man, has been injured. Tell me a little bit about what we can expect from them going forward and when we can hope to see them back on the floor. Uh, it's a little up in the air right now. Miles has a, um, a, a fracture in his foot, in his fifth metatarsal, so that's going to take some time. Um, hard to say exactly when he's going to be back. I hate it for him. Um, Miles has is, is worked so hard through the offseason, so I hate the fact that he's not able to be out on the court for us right now. Um, <clears throat> and Brandon, um, you know, we're still in the process of getting an, an exact idea of what's going on with his knee. Um, that will, at the very least, take a few weeks, I think. So, um, you know, we talked to the team about it. Um, we hate it for those guys. We know they want to be out there with us, but that's part of team sports is um, guys have to fill in and step up and, and contribute when somebody else isn't able to. And um, I think guys like Brett Pierman and Marquise Coleman and Chavis Hamilton, um, who maybe weren't getting quite as many minutes early on, those guys are stepping in and really trying to do a good job for us. And I feel like they've made a lot of progress since uh, Miles went out. And I talked to Charles Smith about this on our last episode. But I'd like to get your thoughts on it as well. You come into a unique situation uh, with Miles Turner out. You've been starting five seniors. That's a real luxury for a new head coach, something a new head coach doesn't get a lot. What kind of advantage does that give you in a, as a first year head coach? Yeah, those guys, those guys have been through the battles. And I think the biggest thing with that group is um, they've had some tough luck over the last several years. And the biggest thing that I think they've gained from their experience is just a hunger level to finish on a strong note. And uh, I think it's just been, it, you're right, it's been a luxury to work with them because they're so motivated right now. And um, you're right, we, we had a few tough stretches um, the last couple of weeks and I, I just feel like we're staying together and we're staying motivated because those guys wanna make sure that they finish on a strong note. So that's been probably the best thing I've gotten out of them is a real resolve and determination to have a good year. 
and I still believe we can have a good year. I just think we have to continue to move forward and get better. And you're trying to lead Emory and Henry to be a successful D Division Three ODAC team. You know a little bit about being a successful Division Three ODAC team. You played at Hampton Sydney College, went to three uh, NCAA tournaments, went to the Final Four once. Tell me a little bit about what that success can help you bring to the table as a coach. Yeah, um, the biggest thing that I picked up from my time playing for Coach Shaver at Hampton Sydney was um, just the culture was so positive there. Um, it was a, a truly a winning culture that was um, founded upon a, um, a desire to achieve excellence in all facets. And so that's the first thing that I think we have to build and we are building right now. And, and again, I go back to the group we have right now. They've really bought in and I think we've made so much progress, not just on the court, but guys are doing a great job uh, in the classroom. And I feel like we're representing our program in the school well off the court. Um, but, but that was the first thing that was in place when I was in college was just our team was really bought into being excellent in all facets. Um, and so you have to build that with the kids that are in your program, but you also have to find kids in recruiting who are going to come in and value that as well. And so I think the blend of working with the kids that you have in your program and trying to teach them how to um, be the best that they can be and make the most of the, the gifts that they've been given, uh, combining that with attracting kids into your program who are also going to value those things. I think that's how you, how you start to build a, a program that's going to really represent the college the way we all want it to. And the vast majority of your previous coaching experience was at the Division I level at Furman and at Elon, both SOCON, they compete at the Division I level. What brings you back to Division Three? That's a great question and it's, you're right, I've been brought back to Division Three because um, I, first of all, I had a great experience as a Division Three athlete. It's, it is different from being a Division One athlete. Uh, I think there's more balance. I think you're a little bit more integrated into the student body. Um, and um, while there's a lot of positives about the Division One level, um, I just like the balance and the ability that you have to pursue other things rather than just spending so much time um, pursuing your basketball. And uh, <clears throat> So that really drew me to it. I also like the fact that as a coach, um, you know, in Division I, it's, it's, it's way more of a business. And, you know, if you don't win right away, you're probably going to lose your job. And um, I feel like that causes a lot of coaches at the Division I level to cut corners and to lose sight of what we're really here for. And I feel like here at Emory & Henry and in most Division Three programs, you have an opportunity to recruit the types of kids that, that um, are going to stand for the right things. You have an opportunity to build a program that's going to um, really be all about their development as people and as basketball players. And um, I just don't feel like I'm going to have to cut corners to do it the right way here. And, and um, that's exciting to me, and that really drew me back to Division Three as well. Well, thanks for being here, Coach, and good luck with the rest of what's been a start to a promising season. That's it for the EHC TV Sports interview. Now we'll send it over to Austin Bowen with Sports.